Welcome to this video on the endocrine system. So this video will provide just a basic overview of the endocrine system and a discussion of the hypothalamic pituitary axis that controls a large part of it. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is a sort of a grand overview of what the endocrine system does. Now the basic over um, the basic responsibility of the endocrine system is to coordinate um, all of these cells in our body so they are all working together and it does this in two ways it um, it regulates the function of body organs on a day-to-day -day basis and it regulates the adaption to change Okay, so what do I mean by regulating body tissues and how does the um, body do that? Well, one way is that it controls growth and development. So as our body, as we begin as an embryo and develop into an adult, um, all the processes of growth that occur in all of the tissues is coordinated by the endocrine system. Um, another regulation function is control is coordination of the reproductive system. Okay, and then another example would be the uh, control of digestion. and absorption of nutrients not just into the organism itself but into the various tissues within the body um, and then a fourth example would be the balance of water and electrolytes okay so that's how it's regulating the day-to-day -day function of the of the entire body. Now the other role is really adaptation to changes in the in the environment. Um, one piece of that is going to be the stress responses. So fight or flight. So if we have you know if all of a sudden our environment changes from a nice relaxing environment to one um, to an environment in which a angry tiger is standing right next to us our endocrine system will respond by revving up the fight-or-flight response. And then another um, part of adaptation would be um, the responses to changes in the environment, like seasonal changes, so changes, environmental changes. And the body responds to this by changing our metabolism, environmental so environment changes in the environment okay so how does the body do all this by um, sending out hormones from our endocrine glands to send messages to our various tissues to change the cellular processes okay so growth and development is is controlled by a hormone called growth hormone uh, the reproductive system obviously um, is controlled by testosterone and estrogen or estrogen um, digestion and absorption um, is controlled by insulin glucagon and a few other um, organs um, a few other hormones of the gut that like uh, ghrelin and things like that and then the balance of um, of water and electrolytes is controlled by ADH or antidiuretic hormone that really is responsible for controlling the um, water levels and then aldosterone which controls um, sodium and potassium levels and calcitonin from the um, parathyroid gland that controls calcium levels in the blood. 
So the stress hormones, fight or flight, um, obviously the uh, ad adrenal medullary hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine, and then also cortisol from the adrenal cortex. So this is sort of the adrenals that, it's a picture of an adrenal gland. Um, and then environmental changes. We respond by increasing or decreasing our metabolism. Metabolism. And that's controlled by thyroid hormones, so T, T3, T4. Okay, so that is our basic overview. Now I'm going to shift over here and we'll talk about the, the glands a little bit. So what's going on in the different, um, we, we have a number of different um, major endocrine glands and um, a lot of endocrine, um, a lot of hormones are actually produced in um, glands that aren't considered major endocrine glands but have endocrine functions. Um, of note would be um, the small intestines, and the large intestines have a few as well, the heart. It's a really bad picture of the heart. It looks more like a thymus. Um, and um, the lungs have a minor role as well. And the kidneys. Okay, so what are the major, we'll talk about the major endocrine glands. So um, the pituitary gland, and actually what's not mentioned here is just above the pituitary gland we have the hypothalamus, which could also be considered, it's part of the brain, but it could also be considered one of the endocrine glands. So the hypothalamus primarily secretes um, releasing hormones, and these releasing hormones control the release of many of, of the other hormones in our body. Um, the pituitary gland um, secretes tropic hormones um, which um, also help to control um, endocrine glands that are in the what's called the hypothalamic pituitary axis which we'll talk about a little bit later. And also the that's the anterior pituitary. There's actually two parts of the pituitary pituitary gland. The posterior pituitary gland um, produces ADH, antidiuretic hormone, and oxytocin, which is a hormone that um, is primarily involved with the um, production and secretion of, um, of breast milk. Then the thyroid gland, which produces um, thyroid hormone, and embedded within the thyroid gland are little glands called parathyroid hormones, there's usually four of them, and these release um, calcitonin. The thymus is um, considered a endocrine gland, but it doesn't, it's actually the only endocrine substance that I'm aware of that it releases are substances called thymosins. And we're not going to talk, talk too much about the, thym the thymus as an endocrine gland beyond um, what I'm going to say right now. So thymusins are actually endocrine substances that control the development of T lymphocytes. So really the thymus gland, thymic gland, even though it does have a, an endocrine function that is very important to the body, um, we are going to talk about the thymus much more in the immune um, section. Okay, so the adrenal glands. Um, essentially you can divide into two. There is the adrenal cortex, which is the outer layer. So there we have a cortex, and then we have the medulla in the middle. And the cortex secretes um, mineral corticoids and glucocorticoids, which, can, are, um, which include uh, cortisol um, as the main glucocorticoid hormone, and um, aldosterone as the main mineral corticoid. The pancreas actually has both endocrine um, functions as well as exocrine functions, meaning that it secretes, um, you know, it secretes endocrine um, substances, including insulin and glucagon, into the bloodstream to have um, effects, 
across the body. And exocrine, it's an exocrine gland because it secretes substances right into the GI tract to have local effects. Um, and then the ovaries and the testes um, are secreting, um, the ovaries secrete estrogen, obviously, and the testes um, secrete testosterone. So that is a very um, broad overview. I do want to define a few terms as, as well. I was um, talking about the term endocrine itself. What does endocrine mean? Um, endocrine means a substance that's secreted into the bloodstream to have distant effects. Via cell signaling in particular. Um, and so another type of, so crine, the root of the word crine, um, just stands for secretion and endocrine means within so this is just secretion that occurs within the body anyways so it's distant effects via cell signaling so a hormone is essentially a signal being sent from one cell to another cell far across the body um, other types of cell signalings that occur by chemicals include paracrine and this is just cell signaling that um, occurs nearby, so it's not distant. It's not distant. So this might be, a, you know, a pancreatic cell signaling another pancreatic cell, for instance. And then there is a term called autocrine, and that is a cell actually signaling itself. So, um, and, you know, this might happen because the cell um, knows that it need, you know, sending out a signal that it needs to change, it may actually secrete a protein and then the cell itself sort of um, has a receptor for that protein. You know, it seems like a roundabout way of doing things, but this happens in, in some cases. Now, sometimes autocrine and paracrine are um, actually occur you know at the same time because this cell while it's signaling itself may also be signaling cells around it as well okay so that's just a, a little bit of terminology now if you think about the endocrine system in um, in comparison to the neurologic system both systems are um, focused on uh, regulating the body but the neurologic system really is um, sending signals that are received and acted upon in seconds or milliseconds whereas and and the effect is generally not sustained it's very quick and it doesn't last long the endocrine system on the other hand is regulating changes that occur over a long period of time from minutes to days okay